Barbara says, oh, that's nice. Elder bashing, objectifying women, painting artifacts. Wow. Yep. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums up this game so far. Welcome, everyone, to Archaeology Arcade, the online program of the Florida Public Archaeology Network. I'm Mike. I'm out of FPAN's Coordinating Center. I'm located in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, Tristan. Tristan, how are you doing? Doing good. I'm looking forward to hearing from our expert today. Yes, and so usually we have a uh, featured guest that joins us that has some type of expertise in the game that we're playing today. Well, today I am your expert, or a maybe somewhat of a... I have some knowledge of, of <laughs> the subject matter for today's He game. runs a museum, and as we were talking beforehand, that means he has had to go through a lot of certification to be able to do that at all. That's a lie. You have to go through zero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do have a degree in it, and I, I, you know, I've been doing it for over a, a while. Right, right, right. But, uh, but yeah, so today, what I'm calling a gorilla stream, which <laughs> one that we didn't really schedule, but yeah. this game came up. It's called My Museum. This is actually a demo of this new game that I guess... It hasn't come out yet. Is that right, Tristan? Yeah, it's on the Steam Next Fest, which is basically kind of a little week long. Here's a whole bunch of demos of upcoming indie games and things. And so this was in there and I thought, well, we need to check this sucker out. So basically what you're saying, it was free. So, so exactly we had, we had to get on it when we we're free. But yeah, yeah. so it, it does it does look but, interesting. And yeah. Buttery Barnacles observes that live archaeologists are de better than dead ones. And I would agree. That's true. Yeah. And of course, uh, right now we are streaming live on our Twitch channel. So if you are joining us as is uh, Buttery Barnacles is, feel free to use that uh, stream chat. If you've got any comments or questions, just, uh, yeah, go ahead and use that. It's always fun when we have some interaction during gameplay. But this game is called uh, My Museum. I'm going to read the description. This is You got this right off of uh, uh, Steam, correct? Correct. Okay. So this is right off Steam. This, this uh I, I don't think it's it's going to be just a demo for a couple more days. So potentially check it out. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, so. they last afterwards, but sometimes they go away. So uh, if you want to check it out, be sure to do that before uh, months coming Monday. Yeah. OK, so let me give you the, the the description from Steam. It says, welcome to the exciting world of my museum, because all museums are always super exciting. Hmm. Use your talents to restore ancient artifacts. And they spell, interestingly, they spell artifacts the British way, mm, I believe, with, it was e. with the E. With yeah. the e. I don't know why that is. Do you know why that is? Why do they do that? Uh, there's a few things that that happened with, but I don't know why. Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> we know they're British. <laughs> Build the greatest exhibition space of all time. Wow, that's a, that's a really high bar. Will you become a part of history? Um, this game is developed by Many Dev Studio, and it's published by the uh, same same name. Um, he says, "Here we go." It says, "My museum is an educational first person virtual simulator. I think that's what SPV stands for. Designed for fans of renovation, management, and history buffs. Are there are there <laughs> buffs of management? Or other people are like, man, yes, I really love actually managing." In video okay. games, there are, for sure. All right. Okay, cool. I mean, I'm not one of them, but whatever. Uh, you can find their astounding renovation mechanics, enhanced economy, and loads of historical facts. Great fun for the whole family. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. In the game, you enter the role of the owner, art enthusiast, restorer of antiques, but also a businessman. Okay. Well, you know, in small museums, it's often the, there's a frequent saying, and that is, in the museum world, you wear many hats. And that's definitely true. In smaller museums, you end up kind of playing a lot of different roles. So, okay, like, I'm like I'm with carpentry, you. right? Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had to build All your own display system. cases. Oh I yeah, know. oh yeah, I've had to pretty much do uh, pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, anybody that works in a small museum, you end up doing everything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> your first task will be to restore the museum that you inherited from your grandfather. Uh oh, this could be problematic. <laughs> uh -oh. Return, return oh, no. it to glory and compete for the admiration of critics. And visitors, <sighs> I've I don't know if I've ever met. I know like there's a publication called the Public Historian, and there's a section of it, and it's uh, it's the publication of the Council National Council on Public History, I think is what their name is, and there's a whole section where they do where they review exhibits, mm -hmm. and uh, our museum was actually featured in there for here at the Courting Center like years ago, and it, uh, was a, it was a positive review. Oh hey, it was good. yeah, so that's that's a thing. It is a like a thing. 
Um, yeah. So anyways, and then it goes on to explain some of the other things that you can do. Uh, one thing it does say is that you can collect old and damaged artifacts. So it'll be interesting to see uh, the ethics of this mm. game. I think we're, we're going to have a lot to talk about. I know I saw in some of the stream videos of uh, you were basically using a Dremel to grind the rust off of some <laughs> artifacts. So I think that's going to... It, well, yeah, yeah fun I mean, to talk about. I know, I know. In some cases, they use air scribes mm. to mechanically remove some some rust. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that's portrayed here. Um, mm -hmm. There's a whole field of conservation. Yeah, that that's I don't a have a whole major is, one. I don't have a whole lot of experience in conservation, uh, but I know a little bit. And so. I know Dremlin is usually not ideal. <laughs> you know, yeah. Typically, I don't think if they use. I think they use air scribes, but yeah, maybe not Dremels. All right, well, let's, let's let's get into launch it. Launch into it and see how it goes. Should we do this in German? Make it interesting. <laughs> that you can. Okay, is this a grandpa? Who's this I, lady? I have no idea. This is very interesting. Oh, yeah. Is that like a docent or maybe miss? Maybe that's the owner. That's nice. All right, effect. so we so said, there's a museum. Grandpa, I cannot oh. find the museum. I haven't been. There oh, he's on the, the phone. Last Thirty years. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Lady assistant. Who oh, are you? Oh. Did you kidnap oh, no. him? <laughs> Calm down. I work at the Green Sun Nursing Home. I help your grandpa wow. okay. personally. Okay. Give my grandpa the phone, please. Of course. H Hello, grandpa. This is grandpa. <laughs> oh my oh, no. god! I cannot hear you. Okay, bro. this could be incredibly problematic. I'm, so we I'm just put a warning I'm out there. We have never played game. this. Game. We don't know what we're in for here. Oh, this could no, be. No. This is going badly already. <laughs> and maybe this is temporary <laughs> voice acting, right? Wait a second, no. But it's possible okay, it's not. Better. Yeah. Museum's in trouble, Grant. Please stop your car. You have reached your destination. Okay. <laughs> How do you know? Uh, Rachel says it's off to a terrible start. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. This is so far. Maybe. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Rip, okay. Do not my enter. museum. That's it. <laughs> Looks like a, uh, you know, a decent size. It's a decent building. looking building. At least yeah. at one point it was. Grandpa. And Rachel asks, is the lady assistant also the GPS lady? Good morning. Maybe. Yeah, right. I'm a new assistant. Yeah. In Darknet. Oh, okay. She I is. I identify myself. As lady assistant. <laughs> then I will what? be Mr. Grandson. Oh, no. Nice to meet you. Darknet. Grandpa. Darknet. Please don't I guess that's me. where the Grandpa uh, looted artifacts they probably get computer. for this museum are <laughs> probably be. found at the Darknet. Memory lapses. Is that why Grandpa ended up in a nursing home? The lawyers of Rich Happiness Corporation. <laughs> this is oh, like no. a risque version of so Nancy Drew. Yeah, yeah. Is harassing poor old oh, but poor. This computer contains information worth rich corporations Thousands will take of bucks. the museum away from yeah. you. They will I'm not a skipping it, by the way. It's skipping automatically. Okay, it's just skipping itself. I thought it was museum. getting Before really problematic and you were just skipping. No. Nope. Okay, so they're not that quick. Grandpa's inheritance, we will have a okay. lot of work to do. We need to renovate the museum, gather the exhibits, a and rich corporate. Yeah, Rachel pointed out it's a rich corporation. I wonder what corporation. Yeah, that's the name of it. Is rich corporation? <laughs> is it who's that what Tesla guy? Is that guy open? One made out of garbage bags and rubble. Ba Rachel says they uh, couldn't think of a as single name. I bet you because <laughs> they didn't want to get sued. We will start renovating. They could made something up. It sounded scary. Well, that's Grandpa true. gathered yeah. some old weapons. Although turn of the nineteenth century. Is this old weapons? Uh, originally okay. English. Then, Did you mention like uh, German? Yeah, I saw that there was some other languages. You so could. it may not have originally been written in English. Okay. So, so the fir first two kind of, My I mean, there's a lot of problems here. Too bad that it's a diluted one. Oh. What? Wow. Did you clean up here? <laughs> I was cleaning on the first Saturday. Uh, the first Saturday of the month? The first Saturday after the war. I found some cheap display cases on the internet, but first on the internet, to maybe in the dark net. The, yeah. Paperwork. Shake out the cement bags. Shake what do you out. What me to do? Clean up rubble and trash. <sighs> Throw the rubble into the bag. Where are the trash bags? <clears throat> Same place. Look around. I believe in you. Wait, is the grandpa there? Is he's on the phone? I guess he's here. Okay. All right. So we're supposed to find some trash bags and throw stuff. I pick out. something up. All right. Oh, there's the trash bags. Okay. Was that? Well, I, I see that these look like, I guess these are display cases that we're looking at that are not in great condition. 
Right. And a lot of a lot of garbage. Yeah. All right. I mean. Okay. <laughs> Controls are a little. What are we? What are we playing? I'm what trying to. F- what? What should I do with this? Tristan's bag? having. You should oh, throw. I did stuff have stuff out. I'm shoving it up. You. <laughs> I heard there. Glad they refrained. At Mitch's nursing home. Throw the trash away. You can find the trash containers in the backyard. You'll get there going through the workshop. <clears throat> Where is the workshop? Well, Where as I said, in, in small museums, <laughs> you do play a lot of roles. And right. Is the entrance the I workshop. have had to take the trash You'll out. You have to demolish the yeah. wall between the museum and the workshop. <clears throat> How? We have demolish. a big hammer somewhere. I... Where did the big the hammer last time? <laughs> uh, so it looked like a historic the building there. The dummy store. Man. Find the so, hammer to demolish the wall, so we we're just can... gonna take. We're gonna take the wall out in the historic building. <clears throat> yeah, okay, that's... we're doing that. And to be clear, I think if I understood that right, we're, we're demolishing the wall so we can throw away the garbage. <laughs> that's how well, I understood maybe... that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So you would not do that in a, a museum, especially a historic building. No. Um, you know, of course, modifications can. And often are necessary for old buildings to Marvelous. convert them into Let's tear down the um, places like museums. But generally speaking, you d- you don't want to, you wouldn't just smash a wall down because right. it all, also might be structural to the building. Yeah, um, you I never know. It, yeah, I mean that. And then also, like, there's a certain guidelines you need to follow for historic preservation. Purposes. Congratulations! <laughs> you, know, you, you just yourself. damaged. Uh, you will find the <laughs> it looks like this. It looks like this was a room that was just Over the door at one point. Yeah. Yeah, that was already boarded. Well, out, yeah, and so. you you never want know what's happened to these old buildings too. Like, mm-hmm. so much stuff probably not to code and mm-hmm. throw the garbage bags onto the rubbish heap. Okay, so you just pick up the bag and, and this throw it away on the rubbish heap. Oh, creepy mannequins everywhere! There's mannequins. Yeah, that's, that's realistic. You know, a lot of mu- yep, a lot of museums have like yours. Mannequins. Like ours. He's not, he's not that creepy. He's a little creepy. No, I throw the garbage. Just jump it on there. Uh, buttons aren't doing anything. Mm. It looks like... Do you have to open the door first? Oh, there, I'm not getting a that. prompt. Throw bags in a Unless it's heap. the wrong place. Well, it, well, that doesn't really look like a heap. Over the fence? Is there, like, somewhere in the building, there's, like, a bunch of trash... Well, we knocked down the door so we could get back there, I thought. Okay. Hmm. You're getting good at oh, this. Oh, that rubbish. Oh, you, oh, that one. Take out okay. the That's old more of a bin. Cases. Yeah. Take out the old display cases. So you're right. going to smash them up with a hammer? Is it? Yep. Oh, I do gonna... a, they just self-smash, I guess. <laughs> you just, just throw them in a bag. Yeah. So those are probably pretty expensive. Display yeah. cases. You probably wouldn't want to just. No, throw but they're away like very. Good. This more like the kind of cabineted curiosity style. Like just throw a whole bunch of stuff in a case. Right. And uh, you know, bam, there you go. So maybe it's trying to be more of a modern interpretation of museum yeah. exhibits. We'll see. He did mention maybe. that it was 19th century. After um, the war. Yeah, firearms. So that's kind of concerning. Like, how did they acquire these? Where are they from? Right. I think um, could be could have been looted during the war. Or we'll see, I guess we'll see. I saw the getting this to register is a little bit difficult. So the mechanics of this game so far, not great. It's kind um, of your classic um, visceral cleanup detail, uh-huh. almost. Yeah, a little simplified as far as that goes. Uh-huh. Yeah, a little there we go. S- kind of. St- Kind of sexist too. I mean, with the lady yeah. assistant. Yeah, who's only <laughs> called know, lady I, assistant. Yeah, that's not that's wild really about that. The, the grandpa, okay. like the voices, like maybe change that up. Yeah, or yeah, just don't have someone trying to put on a grandpa yeah. voice, basically. And, and maybe yeah, like before you'd smash a wall down, you have to get a permit or something. <laughs> to do that. Like, or at least check. The, like yeah, yeah, you know, at least like it probably isn't in an original wall, but. Um, that's, you know, if the game's supposed to like demonstrate management, that is not best practices. <laughs> that is not up to the uh, Secretary of Interior standards. We're just going to clear out everything. 
Mm-hmm. Just throwing everything out. Yep. Which a lot of museums have problems doing that. You yeah, know, they that's true, actually. You don't want to throw anything out. And sometimes you yeah. need to. Sometimes you do, yeah. Deaccessioning, collections, that's that's the thing that does happen from time to time. Although not like this. Yeah. You know, there's a whole process and there's usually policies involved in the, getting rid of certain items in a collection that you just don't have space for or don't fit the mission of the institution. But here in this case, I think it's just a bunch of junk. Just Grandpa so just far, anyway. Him. Yeah. Grandpa was a terrible museum manager. He was yeah. terrible. He cleaned once. Mm-hmm. Actually, this looks remarkably clean for having one cleaning. Right. And, you know, the, in museum field, like I said, you, I mean, obviously you throw trash away, but um, I think the only thing I can think of were an instance where you'd, you'd have to, like, totally clear out a building like this is if you had some type of damage from like a flood or you know right yeah uh, true yeah from a, either a storm or from a leaky pipe sometimes that that's something that can occur and in that case yeah you'd have to probably throw out a lot of stuff um i guess this case is good still is he gonna keep that okay you throw that away The chances of opening the first exhibition on time are increasing. Oh, good. Look <laughs> at your throwing stuff out. Can I have one? I wonder, I wonder what the time frame is. <laughs> Get me a cold beer. Mm. A uh, what should I do now? Roll up your sleeves for renovation. Join the exhibits. How should I restore the exhibit? Uh, Join? With a toothbrush. Seriously? Are you seriously <sighs> asking? I'm. Lady I'm skipping now. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Look okay. for it in the workshop. Psst, lady Not assistant. Not my grandson. Yeah. They must have switched you at the hospital. Oh, boy. At the so renovation. All right. All right, so we need to fix the artifacts. Oh, it's okay. It's a helmet yeah. and some type shield of... Shield here. Here's shield. what I saw. Okay, you're going to use it. So, yeah... Yeah, hundred percent, right? Prop, not the proper way of <laughs> moving rust from an artifact. Um, I think the the first principle at any conservation is to do no harm. Generally, <laughs> so, you should what you do should be reversible too, as I understand right, it. Right, right. Yeah, you don't and, you don't want it to be permanent. In this case, we're going to be taking off more metal than is just rust, and there's processes yeah. that it can be. Or uh, they have the risk too, but I know they're more careful like um mm -hmm. electrolysis yeah it electrolysis actually, i was gonna say really well right way. yeah yeah and so basically that's the only issue with electrolysis is, is it can take a lot more time and space um, too yeah it can take more space and obviously like here it's this is all mechanically moving the rust right um but it won't necessarily get everything like an electrolysis tank right um, it'll probably do a much more efficient or just yeah. a better job. This is but cleaning the cracks, longer. but the reality it wouldn't get all those little cracks and divots and stuff. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, you you did it. Okay. I guess you cleaned it off. We got to do both back. sides. Hooray! Back side. Yeah. So conservation is like Tristan said. It's a very specialized skill set that takes a lot of training and practice. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, I know, like our university has a conservation lab, and they have courses that they teach specifically in conservation uh, but of course a, a lot of museums do have at least larger size ones will have conservation labs yeah but some of the smaller ones probably wouldn't they might actually do some of the small house museums might actually i a lot of the i know of one case in particular someone donated a rusty cannonball and one of the volunteers cleaned it up by using a by sandblasting it sandblaster yeah yeah, Which, yeah and so that's yeah. And that's not too surprising with nope. smaller museums that are volunteer based. Right. Um, a lot of them don't have specialization or training in museum studies or conservation. And so, you know, they're well meaning and they do the best they can. Sure. But um, that's the kind of downside to an all volunteer based kind of model for, for there we go. museums. What about the sides? Oh, Barbara asked, what are, what are we, Barbara asked, what are we up to? Do you want to tell her we, what we're doing? We are. Grinding off rust. <laughs> is that now a paintbrush? 
Looks like we're paint. Scribe. I can't tell. I think it's a. I think it's a paint. I think we're painting it. Oh, we're just. I don't uh, know what know. an airscribe looks like. Uh. I think we're painting it. Okay. Rachel's. Rachel's. Is laughing. She says we don't want to know what it is. <laughs> you telling that to Barbara? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So Barbara, we are. Um, we are restoring an artifact by taking a Dremel to it and then painting it, I think, with a silver paint. That's what we're doing, which is not what we should be doing at all. No. Maybe this but is a protective the- coating so it doesn't rust again. I'm pretty sure it's just silver paint. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> so generally, so like you mentioned, Tristan, if, with a rusted object, obviously best option would have actually been electrolysis electrolysis tank um and that that will that will remove a lot of the rust without having to cause any um physical damage to the Mm -hmm. artifact and then once that's once that process is done and it can take a long time depending on the size of the object uh, but once that's complete usually what they do is like tristan said you want to be able to whatever you add to it you want to be able to reverse what you did so a lot of museums will use uh micro crystalline wax which is basically like a, it's just like a wax um, that you can apply to all sorts of different types of objects, whether it's metal or um, wood. You can apply that and it gives it the protective coat, but it's also something that you can remove if you need to. Right. So I don't think this is microcrystalline wax. I no. think it's just, I know in some cases with large objects, um, I know even like the Park National Park Service for outdoor um, artifacts like large anchors or cannons that you can't necessarily always put in an electrolysis tank. Sometimes they will use a special kind of paint after the, um, you know, they've mechanically removed as much rust as they can. Um, but I don't think that's what they're doing in this case. Yeah. Let's try the uh, pin. Well, that's okay. I guess. Oh, yeah. I Barbara says that there are protective coatings and she says they're usually black. Yeah. So the, um, that's a good point. So the paint I mentioned that some of the national parks use for large anchors or cannons, um, yeah, that is a black paint. That's why when you see those at national parks, it's black. The other thing that can cause uh, iron objects to look that black color actually comes from uh, after the rust is removed, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll add uh, tannic acid. And the tannic acid basically basically prevents any more rust from taking place. But one of the side effects is that it will turn iron into a black color. And so that's that's why a lot of artifacts that have gone through conservation that are made of iron, that's why they're that black color. It's because of the uh, tannic acid. And it's just a chemical reaction with the iron. I'm surprised I remembered that. Way to go. You are the no, expert. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> There There's, are actually, but if it's uh, not, some, there's no way anybody can fact check you ever. <laughs> exactly. There's actually some really good um, conservation. I mean, the the uh, National Park Service has these uh, technical leaflets called conservagrams. Hmm. And they're excellent for conservation. Um, most of those, I think, are all PDFs online that you can find. So, if you wanted to conserve textiles or uh, certain types of metal. Uh, you know, pottery, whatever it is, they they use they have like conservagrams for each one of those different types of objects, and it, and those conservagrams cover a lot of other things too. Uh, but also Texas A and M, um, they have a, a good archaeology program, uh, but they also have a a, a really world renowned conservation lab. And I know at at least at one point their um, technical guide for conservation you could get online. Um, so there are there are resources out there that people. Uh, you know, if you work at a local museum and you want to know, like, a, you know, where, where can I find this information? Those are mm-hmm. some good sources. Yeah. And people can always get in touch with us and we can help you find the sources you need, too. That's kind of what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gentle Maid asked, is tan- uh, tannic acid is what they use for bluing. Yeah, essentially. I know in uh, gunsmithing, it's um, I know that's a term that's used in gunsmithing too to remove rust bluing and probably just in metallurgy in general. But yeah, that's basically what it is. And I'll put links to like the conservagrams to show you what you should do and not this. Yeah. 
So this is almost like a chrome finish we're putting on this. Yeah, it's this is not um, this is not approved by Secretary <laughs> of Interior standards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barbara says that it can start to t uh, turn steel blue. Um, but yeah, I guess for iron it, it might be that because I, I've a, I know that um, it's always been uh, black for iron. So yeah, maybe it, depending on the um, the metal. Okay, I guess that's good enough. All right. Yeah. Assemble. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, so what's next? So we yes, got these two we have objects. These plates that go on. Okay. Oh, so you're assembling it. I guess. I'm not sure I understand the logic of this. Uh. Piece. Yeah, I'm not even sure what. I guess this is armor. Is that like a helmet? That's what I thought. But and we have a couple bolts. Interesting. It said 19th century. So yeah. I'm not sure if this is like a early body armor. I mean, Excellent. it's definitely not uh, typical of like Grandpa, medieval armor, that's right, for sure. Get to work at the workbench. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. Give me another exhibit. We still have some old stuff from the war. I see. Should I bring a few beers? <sighs> so drinking on the job while you're trying to work with delicate <laughs> artifacts. Advisable? Uh -huh. Not advisable? Uh, probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> Such as a grenade, mm -hmm. perhaps. Uh huh. Oh, we can just assemble this. Well, that's not a grenade. Is it? Okay, and then just to clarify so the tannic acid, this is from the Conservation Research Laboratory at Texas a &M. So, yeah, you can find a lot of this stuff online. It says tannic uh, acid is a chemical is mixed with ethanol and applied to iron artifacts after boiling rinses are complete. So after it's gone through like electrolysis to remove uh, the rust, uh, tannic acid reacts with iron ions to create a protective layer of ferric tannic tannate. So that's what that. So basically, it's creating another layer of ferric tannate, and that's what turns it black. And it's that's just probably protected keeps oxygen away from the iron I right imagine. right oh barbara just saw the lady assistant oh yes yeah oh yeah uh and she also mentioned it said it's rooster's armor bodysuit or something like that oh okay. okay this looks like a german helmet yeah there's a bunch of stuff from one and of the world wars looks like and we're also using an unapproved <laughs> conservation <laughs> process right just you know just grinding off all that rust taking all that patina off the artifact right because you know an old artifact can't look old that just unacceptable so Notice for some of this like detail work here, we're going to scrape over. Oh, it just <laughs> yeah didn't just, grind that off at all. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Barbara says you can't have an artifact looking old. Yep. All right. Yeah, they're removing all the patina as well as all the any of the rust, which is you know generally not something you should do. Right. I mean, removing the rust is one thing, but as we mentioned, there's other ways to do that. Yeah, you don't always need to do that even. That's true. Yeah. If, if it's stable. Right. Got to get it inside. I guess I don't. No. Maybe you're just not. To, uh, I guess you have a couple I got, spots. I've got some spots around. It'd be interesting to um, these objects that you're working on right now, if they are based on um, real artifacts that have been 3D modeled. Mm hmm. Yeah, actually, it was a interesting because it'd be a lot easier from uh, like the graphic game designers to uh, choose a three D model that's already up on Sketchfab. Interesting how when I move the 
helmet, it, camera goes out of focus for a moment and comes back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'd be one thing to find out from the developers is if they use any 3D modeling in this. And, and basically, that's becoming more uh, common now for museums to create 3D models of their collections and put them up online just for accessibility and mm -hmm. also just long-term um, preservation, having a digital uh, recreation of an object that you can essentially keep forever. Um, but there are, we have a sketch, there's a website called Sketchfab where a lot of different museums and other institutions and, and us, the Florida Public Archaeology Network, have accounts that where we, we make 3D models of artifacts and then we upload to, okay. those to our page Got and it. you can find them all on there. And I know a lot of the times um, those models are used by game developers. So they'll actually go in and, and use it. Sure, yeah. And I'm pretty sure, uh, wasn't Reality Capture just purchased by a big uh, gamer company? Mm, I don't know. I think it was. Um, it's on the Epic Game Store. I don't know if they own it, though. That's not how that usually works, as I understand it. But it could be still. I think I think they bought it out. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, Epic. Yeah, Epic bought out. So Reality Capture is a software that you can use to create 3D models with. Um, through a different process, either through uh, 3D scans using a laser scanner to 3D to, to scan artifacts and then upload those files to this uh, using the software. Uh, another way of doing it is called photogrammetry, which Tristan, you probably have more experience than I do on that. I talk about. Oh yeah, photogrammetry is basically using photographs to make a 3D model. Um, I kind of describe it as like a a reverse panoramic, whereas with a panoramic you're looking at a point or sorry you're standing on a point taking multiple photographs with a photogrammetry you take multiple photographs of a point and then you plug all that into the program and if you've done it right then you get a 3d model of your object if you've done it right if you've done it right which <laughs> depending on the object can be very easy or very very challenging to do in my mm -hmm. experience yeah and so there's a different software you can uh, do that with. Well, right. One Bunch of them of is, them. Um, yeah, Reality Capture. But yes, it was bought by um, Epic. So they, they now have that. And they're going to basically use these models for game development, which I know some video games already have utilized that. Well I know done. like the Assassin's we are Creed. Taking small steps uh, towards the opening of the I, I think mostly what they've done in those games is used terrestrial yes, laser scanners I for like entire buildings. See the reviews. So it for landscapes, but I know um, Red Dead Redemption, there's, act tomorrow, there's actually buildings in that game that are real that. historic structures <laughs> that they've scanned. We won't get any exhibits without money. Grandpa, what That's about true. your treasure hidden in the museum? Oh, God. We brought new showcases. Oh, no. Come on, oh, fast. No. Let's Wait. Put up the Come on, fast. Very fun. Uh, treasure he's hidden in the museum. Right. Uh, oh, I mean, cases. it is true. You you need money for exhibits. I mean, they are they can be expensive. Largest, but, but generally, there's not like treasure laying around. <laughs> you know, like, right. you know, like if you're in a museum, you either have to raise that money uh, through fundraising, or sometimes uh, you might get a donation from uh, you know some some wealthy person or some uh, local business. Uh, I've worked at a museum before where we did summer exhibitions. And we had to, every year that we did that, they can be pretty expensive, even ones that you don't um, create yourself that, you know, these are, uh, you know, basically loaned exhibits that you mm -hmm. can get from other institutions. They can be pretty expensive. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm talking even like a hundred thousand dollars for an exhibit that you get for just a few months. Um, but there are, you know, I've, I've been involved in exhibits like that. Now, now that weren't that expensive, you know, I'm talking maybe five, 10 grand where we got like a local bank to, to donate the money to, to bring it in. So they can be expensive. And so what are you, you're just arranging the cases? How are you? So. Want? Yeah. All right. Hmm. There, well perfect flow. <laughs> yeah. They said the All same right. about Stalin. Oof. We are still what? exhibits. I don't know. You renewed a few. We'll buy the rest. 
I've got three, no, four dollars in my pocket. Grandpa, apparently you brought a very valuable exhibit. Yep, I brought it. It's called Argus and... And? And that's it. I don't remember anything huh. else. I have a computer to remember that stuff for me. Computer. All right. Writer. So we got to go so to computer. Keeping. <laughs> Grandpa, password. Is it password? I can't get in. The computer <laughs> asks for the password. Grandpa? Password. I, I don't remember. I have a computer. Barbara asks. So does Grandpa just say inappropriate things and everyone just ignores him? I think so. They also make fun of him in a very mean way. Yeah. Four letters. Easy. Four numbers or four special characters. I don't know where to start searching for a password. Um, this is just like Nancy Drew, except <laughs> inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grandpa was very careful not to damage the vertical roof supporting beams in the main hall. Ah, it must be where it's at. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you can go out of this. Vertical supporting Vertical beams. supporting beam. So it must be these, I guess. E. Oh, yeah, there you go. L, <laughs> L, A. Ella. What does that spell? E, L, L, A. Ella, right? that a person's name this is like wordle there wordle. you go <laughs> this is just like wordle barbara says oh that's nice elder bashing objectifying women painting artifacts wow yep. yeah i think that pretty much sums up this game so far yep so, very problematic yep if you're joining us now there's some warnings <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we did not know this going going in. We I kind of expected maybe something along the lines of Nancy Drew, but this is. Uh, I mean, I was expecting we would have comments to be making here. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little more than I was expecting, though. <laughs> How do I get out of this? <laughs> That's screen? what you get. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you could tell that Grandpa had no training or any business running a museum. And the same is true for our character now. Uh, it's, it's clear that he really doesn't know what he's done. Uh. Okay. I don't know if you want to click on that. No. <laughs> I don't know what else. Yeah, I don't know what else we're going to find on this computer. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I haven't. Maybe I need to look at those. These better. <laughs> when we put this up on YouTube, if we put this up on YouTube, I might have to make sure like it's age limit is yeah. appropriately. Wait, what are you looking for? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go to the computer to do what? To try and find where his really cool oh, exhibit his... is. Okay. So we got Is it this camera? Photos of things, but Nope, not that camera. No. I can't get it, out of the Yeah. computer. So, so of course, real museums use computers all the time. Right. Just like any office would use, but um we talked about photogrammetry and reality captures. That's one thing for collections that that you oh, that are more commonly used of course. in modern museums. But then also there's there is software that most museums use uh, for cataloging camera. collections Maybe and inventorying them and keeping track and of them. It? And the most common we'll one see. used is called Past Perfect. Oh, there it is. It's, so it is a camera. So you get yeah. to restore it. All right. All right. Get the get the grinder out. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a very fine tuned instrument that we're just yeah. going to grind out with a grinder. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Now I can't see my mouse. So wait, so this this is the object that's supposed to be like going to bring people in, a camera? I guess so, yeah. I wonder if it's like a camera that did something. Hmm. Took a pic, like a, a real famous picture or something. Because this looks like a pretty typical early 20th century camera to me. Yeah. 
You know, nothing really unique here. Unless like a, you know, again, it was used at a, like a significant event. You could have some like we can, vocal history that we have or something. A, right, that you can actually document like, yeah, this camera was actually used for, I don't know, pick pick whatever event you want right. for that. Or maybe be used by like a really famous photographer. I could see maybe then it ha having value. So that, that's all really important information. Um, right. The provenance of a uh, artifact has provenance? all that information. I think that's what they call it in museum and provenience mm, is in okay. archaeology. And it has to do with like, you know, where it was found and who found it, all that stuff. Um, whereas in museum, the museum field, it has to do with uh, essentially it's it's line of ownership. You want okay. to be able to yeah, document yeah. like who's owned it over time. That, huh? Which I doubt they have any records here. Like, it didn't look like they had any really good detailed records on their computer of any collections. Yeah. At least on that one that we saw. Well, and yeah, not much in the way records are at all. Okay. Now, all... which again is for these kind of smaller museums that are all volunteer based, that's actually not uncommon. Um, mm -hmm. Or at least they'll, they'll have like their, their own kind of system for cataloging artifacts just like in a library you would have a, a you know an inventory and a catalog so people can keep track of things museums have the same similar kind of system in place um there's no there are some kind of standard systems but not every single museum uses it some of them have their own kind of way of numbering objects uh and cataloging them great um so there's we will no sell the camera we should what? open the first exhibition on time. We did it. We're going to sell it? I think I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's for luck. Uh, yeah, generally okay. speaking. Oh, Grandpa is crying. You too. know, when you take an object into a collection, it's something that well, you plan to keep there for forever. I two beers from the store and I fell over. Oh, yeah. I don't have any more money left for another one. So yeah, but we mentioned we mentioned before that you know sometimes it is necessary to get rid of artifacts in a collection. You know, for some of the mentions reasons we mentioned, mm -hmm. if you run out of space or if, or if there's you know not if it doesn't fit in line with your mission or what you're collecting, sometimes it's necessary. But again, there's there's usually a very specific process that lays that out in any like collections policy um, and plan. And usually it's it's not like a decision that one person makes to raise some money for a temporary exhibit. That would, I would think, would be considered pretty unethical. Yeah. So here's a little bit of context. Oh, yeah. Now we're assessing the value of, the, uh, okay. of these artifacts. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's another thing. Museums, if you go and take an artifact into a museum and you, you know, I'm sure they'll tell you what they can about what it, the object was used for, maybe when it was made, but what they, what most museums that are ethical at least wouldn't do was give you a monetary value for it. Uh, most of them that follow standard kind of ethical practice will not associ associate or assign some type of value on it for a lot of different reasons. Number one, obviously the idea of selling objects um, for profit is kind of, is very problematic because it, it really, bolsters the illegal antiquities trade but there's also like legal reasons for a museum to not tell you like what they think it's worth because you know there's a potential of of being uh you can get in it, some issues legal trouble with some lawsuits if, if that ever came down to it right so yeah if it comes down to um ethically too if it comes down to we need to uh you know move some artifacts along it shouldn't be well what can we sell for the most money it shouldn't be part of the question no absolutely situation. not right right there, i mean there's a lot of things that go into making a decision like that but yeah right it, it's not going to be what's the monetary value of it right is or barbara says assessing the value for insurance purposes wink wink yeah yeah <laughs> and again like that's something an insurance company would do not not necessarily now if a museum had a um most museums do have insurance policies they'll have like blanket insurance policies and so there there is some um evaluation done on an entire collection but that's usually done through the insurance company through an appraiser 
and that's who would do something like that. Like uh, Antiques Roadshow, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I think that's still running. I guess it probably still is. But uh, that's a real popular program, or at least it was, on uh, PBS. And, it's, you know, people, for those of you who may have never heard of this program, but basically people bring in their stuff uh, from their garages or whatever, and, and they show it to basically appraisers, and they tell them what the object is and what they think it's worth. Uh, but, the, again, that's those are appraisers. Those are not... Um, usually, I think most of the time it's not museum folks. And I know there was that one channel that, uh, show on, uh, history channel, Pawn Stars. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they would bring in these like, you know, experts that would come in and tell them the value of it. Um, and, but most of them again, were, were like collectors. They weren't, or appraisers. They weren't museum people. I do remember there was, and again, I don't know if this show is still running or not, but there was one guy that they would bring in. Uh, cause this show was shot out in Las Vegas and he was from a local museum. And the thing that, uh, was kind of cool about it is he would never give a value. He would just tell mm-hmm. them what it was. He'd say like, this is what it is, but I'm not going to give you an evaluation. Mm-hmm. But he was ethical. It, though he was still on the show, but yeah. Yeah. Beyond that. And Barbara says Pawn Stars is still on TV. I haven't watched it in years, but, uh, yeah, I was barely aware of it, honestly. Yeah. So I see you're back to the main menu. Are we done? <laughs> I think that is it for the demo. I got the opportunity to oh, that do was it. a survey and you bet I'm going to do a survey, but I won't do okay, it on the yeah. air probably. Yeah. Well, that was interesting, man. Yeah. I mean, it gave I, us a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it sure did. I feel like we should inflict this on some conservators someday, maybe when it comes out or oh, something. Oh man. Yeah. It would be great to have yeah. someone that specializes in conservation. I want to hear them. Into the- Cause like I said, I don't, I mean, I have a, I've done a little bit of it before, mm. but that's not my specialty. Um, so obviously it's not my specialty. We could start a series, conservator reacts. <laughs> we, we could, I would love <laughs> to see like the, the final, like what you can do in terms of creating the exhibit. If you can get down into creating actual signage or if it's just, you're just basically making a layout, like how involved in that, in this game, can you actually get would be right. kind of interesting. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this was this was uh, very problematic. Um, yep. A lot of people already pointed out. <laughs> As people we've, have been pointing out the I whole think, time, yeah. I think Barbara's got the best uh, description. She says, elder bashing, objectifying women, painting artifacts. <laughs> like, yeah, all, you know, all very problematic. Yep. So, um, yeah, that was, yeah, but maybe for sure we'll have to, now that we know, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye on it and see kind of what comes of this and how it develops, and uh, uh-huh. we'll, maybe we'll do another one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was interesting. Yep. Um, does it? I, I don't think we have any. We have like lots of comments in the stream chat. Um, so yeah, we'd be interested to hear what everybody thinks of, of this game. Like, well, we're still on for a few more minutes, but yeah. Overall, on a scale of one to ten, Tristan, what? For, let's just say in terms of its accuracy based on your experience because i know you've you've worked you know in some capacities with museums sure. uh, throughout your career like what what would you give this in terms of accuracy in museum best practices um i feel like a three is probably too much yeah <laughs> yeah i i agree i think <laughs> i mean it's, it's kind of hard to i know it's hard to say because this is just a demo and right really got and so it's a development who knows how yeah. it'll change you know give them a little yeah. credit there but yeah, yeah. But in terms of, you know, historic preservation, we damage the historic structure without getting proper permits or having the proper expertise when we smashed the wall down. <laughs> uh, we threw out a bunch of stuff, like cases and stuff that looked like they could have actually been pretty old. Yeah. So like that's kind of problematic, right? So we could have literally been throwing out what are essentially artifacts at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the collections doesn't seem like there was any like database or cataloging based on the computer we saw. So that's problematic. Obviously the conservation was all worst practices. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't want to, you don't want to there, do anything. There was really nothing there that was nothing there. Selling the artifact again, something you don't want to do very unethical. Right. Um, yeah. All around. I would, I would agree. I think that this is like maybe a two or three, you know? Yeah. And honestly, if you want to feel like you're running a museum, I don't think this will get it to you. This is no, not at all. This yeah. doesn't simulate that or give the feel of that, yeah. at least as it is right now. Of course, you know, uh-huh. got to add that caveat. It's in development. Uh-huh. But yeah, it was yeah. an experiment. 
it was an experiment. <laughs> well, we do have um, another archaeology arcade scheduled. I think the next one we have is going to be in. We may do one before this too, but the next one we have scheduled is for March 18th, and mm -hmm. I believe we're playing Fallout. Is that what we're playing? Yes, we have. Um, we have. Uh, we're going to do. Uh, talk, look at some of the like kind of blast set up museums and talk about uh, heritage preservation in disaster scenarios. I think. Yeah, so I, gu I guess that's represented, and I haven't played Fallout in a long time, so yeah. it'll be interesting. Um, and then, of course, uh, next just in a couple days, it's going to be March. So March is always Florida Archaeology Month. So there's lots of events that are taking place both in person and virtually um, throughout the entire state of Florida. So if you want to hear about out. what's going on, check out some of that stuff online. Cause there's a lot of good opportunities right now. There sure are. Well, yeah. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. We hope everyone has a great week and hopefully we'll see some of you all on March 18th. And if we do another one before then, we'll, we'll share that on our uh, Facebook pages, both North central and Northwest, as well as our website, which is fpan.us. You can find a calendar of events on that website. And also uh, if you want to check out any, Previous archaeology arcade episodes you can do by that you can do that by going to our YouTube channel. Just type in Florida Public Archaeology Network. You'll see our YouTube channel on there, and we have a whole playlist of all our previous archaeology arcades, and including this one, which will be up probably in the next couple of days. Yep. All right. Bye all.